Hi, Mark Hamburg here from MSA with our little weekly update. Today is uh, Friday, June the 12th. Water levels are really good, and the real good news is I'm getting a haircut today. So uh, that's the end of that. Um, even though the water levels are good, we're not hearing many reports of salmon being caught, although people are seeing salmon. A couple of people canoed down the Dungarvan and saw numerous salmon along the way. Um, but perhaps they're being caught, we're just not hearing. And of course, we really, because the DFO traps are not in, we really don't have any idea of how many fish are, are moving in. And I, I just got off a conference call uh, with DFO, and they will be back to work. Field work will start to begin around the 22nd of June, and uh, they will try to put the trap nets in, at least have it in for the fall. So we may get a part of the, the run counted this year. So um, the Gaspro fishery has started out here locally on the Northwest Miramichi and uh, just going by the bridge yesterday, uh, they were emptying the trap and the boat was half full of Gaspro. So I, I assume the catches are pretty good. And our First Nation uh, commercial striped bass harvest is underway and has been for a week or so. Now I, I understand that these uh, striped bass this year will be marketed more locally um, through the supermarkets um, as opposed to going to Boston last year. And since I haven't been in a, a supermarket in weeks, I don't know if they're there now or not, but you could look for it in your local supermarket and these will be, um, you know, labeled, I understand, from Eel Ground First Nation. So check that out. Um, one of the other things is, is that we don't have the, uh, any way of knowing what the water temperatures are yet either, because the Miramichi River Environmental Assessment Committee that has those uh, uh, monitoring stations on the southwest, the northwest, the southwest, uh, are not up and running yet because of funding issues. Now, I, I'm a director of that organization, and they're another nonprofit that's struggling to find money to operate. So they're, they're looking for government assistance right now, but if you wanted to help them out to get those monitors in, you could make a donation. Their phone number is 778-8591. If you really want to see those water temperatures, you could help them out. Um, so our crews were out again this past week uh, as part of the striped bass uh, spawning survey, and certainly we've, you know, we've we observed uh, striped bass spawning on the southwest Miramichi. We collected the eggs, uh, and we also collected larvae. So we know we see them spawn. We have the eggs. We had the larvae, this is the third year in a row for the Southwest Miramichi. So we have conclusive proof that the Northwest Miramichi is not the only spawning area. And we went back to the Tavis Pack. So when the striped bass started spawning in the Northwest, we went down to the Tavis Pack and we missed the spawning because the, we didn't get any eggs, but we got larvae and we've gone back again and we, we have lots of larvae. So we know they're spawning, well, there's larvae in the Davison pack. So um, we're going to collate all this information. We'll be going back and doing beet sains, looking at juveniles later this summer, but we want to get this publication out because Kosowek meets apparently this fall and to look at the status of straight bass and we want to be able to present a paper that says we've demonstrated proof that they're spawning in more places than the Northwest Miramichi. But boy, did they ever spawn in the Northwest Miramichi this year. Again, there was so many fish you couldn't even run a boat through the area without hitting. Um, the new thing that we've been working on is, uh, is our barrier pools that are operated by the Department of Natural Resources. Now these barrier pools have been operating for over 30 years and they're on the Dungarvan and the Northwest Miramichi. So um, there was a delay, uh, you know, everyone's wondering what, what was happening with the barriers. 
Uh, sometimes it's been a struggle over the years to get government to continue to commit to operate them. But uh, we were approached to see if we would assume the operations uh, of the barriers. So not something that we were anxious to do, but we, we know they are a conservation measure. And so for people that are not familiar with the barriers, what they have is a basically a counting fence uh, and a trap. So fish that go up into these headwater areas are counted and released above there uh, into a pool and the upper end of that pool is blocked. So the fish can't go any farther. So they stay there all summer and are protected 24 hours a day against poaching. And then just prior to spawning, the upper barrier is removed and then those fish can move further upriver and spawn naturally. And this, this is really, a, 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 for the Northwest Miramichi in particular, this is the only reason why there's still fish left in the Northwest Miramichi as far as I'm concerned, is because before those went in, the poaching was rampant in the headwaters. And you can access the headwaters almost everywhere by road. And uh, anyway, they've really saved the Northwest Miramichi and probably the Dungarvan as well. So. Anyway, important to operate them. So we are now, uh, our crews will be starting on Monday and you know, they'll install the fences within a few days and, and we'll be counting and operating there under the MSA banner. So this is not a, a direct contract. This is more of a, a partnership between the provincial government and ourselves to do this. So anyway, hopefully it'll work out. We'll do a trial for a year and if everything works well, then we'll probably sign a long-term arrangement to look after them. So we are now uh, advertising for a uh, administrative and financial officer as our long-term employee, Noel Chason, is going to retire at the end of June. So, um, and this is a key position because we all like to get paid, especially. Uh, so we need to get someone on right away. So that's being advertised. And, uh, and today we've put out an ad for president of the MSA because I actually wouldn't mind retiring one of these days as well. So, um, so look for that if you're interested in the president of the MSA. Um, I think the deadline for that is going to be the middle of July and uh, hopefully we'll have somebody to assume that job in the fall. And uh, so the other thing is our online auction. So our online auction uh, uh, closes at 8 p.m. on this coming Monday, June the 15th. Uh, some great items up there. Uh, bidding has been pretty brisk and it's uh, going very well. And as soon as that closes on Monday evening, on Tuesday, we're going to have another one with some interesting trips on there and, and uh, different items. So uh, we hope to keep those auctions going all summer long. Obviously, because we still can't have our big fundraising events like we normally do. So we're going to try at least on the auction side of things. And as things loosen up a little bit, you know, we never know. We might end up having a little barbecue somewhere or a smaller events, but um, it's hard to predict how that's all going to unfold. But anyway, we, um, we're getting right down to the wire on eradication of smallmouth bass in Miramichi Lake and the river. We're expecting an answer on our permit by Monday, June the 15th from DFO. So we should know whether we'll be given permission to go ahead and, uh, and it's expensive. And so our conservation community groups are all pitching in and uh, we're hoping the province is going to come with, with matching funding, but uh, it'll be basically done with provincial and, and the nonprofit sector providing the money. So, Stay tuned next week and we'll tell you what progress we're making on that. Anyway, have a good week. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on that notification bell so you can stay up to date with everything happening here at the MSA.